Oh yeah, I also watched um, Dave Chappelle's flipping stand-up comedy special um, called The Closer. It's absolutely incredible. Like probably, in my opinion, maybe his best so far. Maybe not his best overall, again, because it's not really a laugh a minute kind of thing because he's obviously moved on from that sort of vibe. But if you're... If whatever this new iteration of Dave Chappelle is this kind of half TED talk, half kind of, um, yeah, half TED talk, half comedy special sort of thing, this was the best representation, I think, of it so far. I absolutely loved it. Um, so much pain, so much kind of confusion, so much insight, so much wonder, so much offensive shit as well that really kind of caught people off guard. I think people are really surprised of how flipping offensive it was overall. But I absolutely loved it as a as a flipping um sorry, as a um, as a as a comedy special. Definitely one of my favourites. And there's a really funny article here that somebody shared from the Hollywood reporter that I'm going to talk about in a minute. But the actual special itself was really funny He's watching the crowd's reaction because it didn't feel like Maybe they cut it really well, but usually some stand-up specials, when they film it, they or when the comedian films it, they film maybe four sets, and then they use the best of the four sets and kind of splice them together. But with this one, it kind of felt like it was just one set they kind of filmed um, because the crowd didn't change that much as opposed to um, some of Dave Chappelle's um, comedy specials. But it was funny to see the people in the crowd reacting to some of the things facially, like, you know, not knowing what to say and do because he kind of started the the, the comedy special again. No spoilers, you know, it's out now. But um, he st basically started saying, this is going to be my last. I'm basically going to light a match and burn, you know, and kind of, you know, light this whole house on fire, walk away. And this is going it, to, it's going to be what it's going to be. I think he knew fully well the content he was speaking about, the topics he was speaking about and how he was speaking about them, he was definitely going to incur the wrath of people online who are going to say he's cancelled because he's transphobic, homophobic and all these other things that people kind of label at him even though he's just a comedian telling jokes and even though he's just kind of, you know, essentially asking rhetorical question on stage. So I thought that was fairly interesting but just seeing the people's faces in the crowds, honestly, I'm going to get a picture up here because I kind of did a little uh, tweet flip thing about it where I was kind of talking about the entire thing and how funny and hilarious it was, right? Um, so essentially, um, let me see, let me see if I can get up here. I got up on here. It's definitely got, here we go. This is flipping legitimately one of the best things I've legitimately seen in a very, very long time in terms of a stand up special. So, um, it starts off, obviously I've got this picture that I shared on my, um, on my Twitter where I took a screen grab of this. So there's a crowd obviously watching, um, Dave Chappelle work his magic and do his thing. And then there's these two white ladies here who obviously, you know, with the coloured hair and the bright lipstick and stuff, you know, you, you, you could imagine what their political leanings are and hear what he's talking about. And it's just funny to see like the lady on the left is grinning ear to ear because she finds it funny. She can't help but laugh. But then her friend on the right or no, her friend on the, on her left is obviously not laughing, doesn't find it funny whatsoever. It's really offensive to her. It's really caught off guard. And they're right bang in the middle of Dave Chappelle's eyesight, right? So he knows they're there. He knows when he's telling these jokes of when what's coming, who's going to be upset of what and it's just funny to see that two those two reactions and also just the kind of idea of like did the lady on the left not tell her friend on the right that she was gonna go to a Dave Chappelle comedy special um you know taping were they not aware of how offensive it could potentially get or were they just blindsided because this was Dave Chappelle's last kind of I think contract obligation with Netflix and they didn't actually know how bad it was actually going to be who actually knows who bloody knows but I thought that scene was pretty funny to see and then there was this bit where Dave Chappelle says something that upset the both of them. They, they didn't find it funny whatsoever. And I think this might have been um, something about a trans person's anatomy. I think if you watched it, you know what I mean. And it's just funny to see the guy at the back, <laughs> his face with it. This guy here, his face with it, right? And then he contrasts it with these two ladies. And even this black lady here, like, just like, um, I'm going to be like, I'm not just sure if I should be laughing at that. But that, that joke was legitimately one of the funniest things I've heard. Legitimately one of maybe the offensive things I've heard too, especially from somebody as big as Dave Chappelle because that's the thing with him too that's really cool as much as I think I would listen to Schultz's um, reaction to it he wasn't that impressed with the special but in terms of fans of comedy of stand-up comedy in general as obviously I'm a fan of stand-up comedy I obviously listen to guys like Legion of Skanks and a few other people they're quite they're lower level guys right they're not as famous right so they can take more chances because there's nothing really to cancel with those kind of guys because they're self-sufficient they're lower level they're not that famous you're not going to take much away from them if you try and cancel them right Seth Simons and all those guys try it but it's a bit of a waste of time like those Jake Flores guys you know what I mean they're trying to always kind of stir up controversy but no one really cares because these guys aren't that well known 
but it's something else for a guy of Dave Chappelle's notoriety, right? He's like on the same level as like a Bill Burr, of like a John Mulaney, of like a Sebastian Maniscalco, even like a Joe Rogan, right? In terms of like well-known comedians, like comedians that kind of supersede stand-up comedy and just kind of are like a fixture of the entertainment industry. For him to go up on stage and say the stuff that he says is just so amazing and really courageous and also something to be quite, com to be com it's commendable. In the same way that I was saying, remember when Akon was saying that wild shit about R. Kelly? I was like, oh, that's nuts, isn't it? Imagine dying on the R. Kelly hill. But then on the other side of things, I think to myself, if you had fuck you money, part of the reason why fuck you money is so appealing to guys like myself who have a burning desire to share all my opinions and to say things exactly how I feel them in my head without kind of filtering myself is because you don't want to ever be like tied down by the man. You don't ever want someone to tell you what you can't say where you can't go if you can go on lunch if you can go on the holiday can you go to the toilet like, you don't want someone to be in charge of you. you want to be free to kind of be the kind of driver of your own destiny right to kind of be able to take your family and friends with you and say hey we're going over there do you know what I mean? without somebody telling you no you can't go there you can't do this do you, know I mean? you want to be in charge of your own shit so when you when i think of the idea of fuck you money it's not just the ability to kind of live where you want to buy what you want and to not worry about ever looking at a bill again it's more so just about being able to just say what the fuck you want unfiltered because no one can cancel you because you are the master of your own ship you are the yeah you're a captain of your own ship no one can take anything away from you because you're so completely self-sufficient and also you have the ability or you have the also bonus what Dave Chappelle has you have an ardent fan base who are ride or die with you regardless they don't care what people say about you they're always going to be your fans and that is something that's so priceless same thing with people that have loads of supporters on like their Patreon or people that support their YouTube or whatever it may be it's great to know that you can take some chances because your fans are always going to be there for you you, even if the corporation decide oh this is too risky i don't want to upset the work mob and all that stuff so it's great to see somebody of his position do that sort of stuff but it is quite upsetting to see people in a crowd react the way they're reacting because it feels like when people say jokes on stage there are some people who interpret those jokes as like statements or rallying cries like go and kill all the trans go and kill all the gays when they're not saying that they're just, they're kind of sharing jokes and i think at this point in time we're at in the moment it's really upsetting that you which is what dave Chappelle talks about that you can't be funny and take the piss out of everybody some people have to be treated with kid gloves some people are allowed to get ripped up ripped to completely like look at america as a good example if you're not vaccinated people are allowed to call you whatever you want right call you a hit call you dumb uninformed you know um bottom of the earth blah blah, blah. but then if you are vaccinated no one's allowed to question your, you know, your meant your kind of flipping IQ and all that malarkey and say if you're smooth brained or not. It's only the people that are non vaccinated. That's that's thing. I, that's a thing I don't really like. I think everybody should be able to get the jokes, whether you're male, female, whatever sexual orientation you are, you know, able bodied, not able bodied, whatever. We all get the jokes, so that, that puts us all on the same playing field. We're all the same. We're on the same level. But if you start saying those people are up here, you're up, you're down there, it then starts to kind of separate us even more. And I think that's a sad thing when people go to comedy shows. I don't know what it is they kind of maybe it's because people are laughing and sometimes if people are laughing at stuff that you're kind of sensitive about it's the same with somebody said a joke about a flipping school shooting and you had a staff i remember that died in the school shooting of course that's going to hit you a little bit more but the person isn't trying to be offensive to make you upset they're trying to be offensive in order to find a line of where it kind of goes from funny to not funny because how else are you going to figure out what's funny if you can't kind of approach the line or step over it from time to time so that's the thing i was, I was a bit but again laughing at them in one way but i was quite bummed out to see them be so like pissed off and upset in terms of their face obviously i wasn't saying that in the tweet but you know what i mean in it right and then of course there's these lovely pictures at the end of the dave Chappelle special where he's got these great pictures r.i.p um, norm mcdonald uh norm um no, I'm not, I'm not sorry r.i.p norm is always got a great picture with norm he says i think it's for norm at the end he's got great pictures with like kanye west before in the change room pictures of him hanging around all black and white really well done i like the idea or i like what he's done with his art and his kind of um creativity where he's been able to kind of cr present himself as more than just a stand-up or make it more of like a musician i don't know it's just it's cool to see him have these sort of like things i'm assuming there's going to be a hard physical copy of this um album or maybe of the whole series that he's done with netflix so there'll be probably pictures that you can have as well yourself so you can kind of see what it, it went into the specials the vibe around it and it's just nice to see this is obviously dave Chappelle here with his wife just chilling having a great time and then of course in response to that everyone kind of lost their mind because there's some really offensive jokes in that special and this is a headline from the hollywood reporter it said dave Chappelle gets standing ovation amid netflix special controversy he said this is what being cancelled is i love it so i guess he kind of did a show after the special came out and after the controversy about him kind of saying the things he said 
It said, amid a swell of controversy around the new um, Netflix special, The Closer, Dave Chappelle took center stage Thursday as a... What's that? Sorry. Why is it not letting me do it? Yeah. Took center stage Thursday night at a star studded and sold out LA show. LA... Com- what? Oh, okay, the LA's comedy... Oh, so he did a show at the Hollywood Bowl. That's sick. Though the superstar comedian did not repeat any of the jokes that had been loudly rejected by the members of the community, GLAD and a National Black Justice Coalition. But look who's coming after him. The LGBT community. I don't know what GLAD is, but the Black Justice community is coming after him too. That's mad, isn't it? He thumbed his nose at the notion that the counterculture while promoting messages of kindness and love. Chappelle shared the marquee with a screening of the untitled Dave Chappelle documentary. Oh, wow, it's cool. Directed by American Factory Oscar winners um, Steve Bugner and Julia Reich. That offers an inside look at the last year's summer camp series. Wow, I can't wait to watch that. Um, mounted at the Wiring Pavilion near Chappelle's home in Yellow Springs, Ohio. The more than 50 shows served to re-, re uh, uh, reinvigorate the small town uh, during a dark days of COVID-19 pandemic as it played host to a circle of famous friends. Um, some of some of them were on the bill tonight, including Soup Dog, Steve Curley, the, the DJ Jersey Jeff, Stevie Wonder, Poet, and Amir Suleiman, Nas, Lizzo, and singing, uh, what, and singing John Hammond. John Ham sung. Lizzo and John Ham singing on stage. Bruv, he's got the, that's what I love about Dead Chipotle, looking at those pictures. He's got the most random celebrity friends, man. He just seems like such a good hang. He obviously spends too much time in bars drinking on his own, but he does seem like a good hang. Comedian Jeff Ross kicked off the program with a short set followed by a screening of the film with one attendee describing it as moving, then came Chappelle dressed in a suit with his wife and a cigarette in hand for the main event that saw him being heralded and the mic on numerous occasions as the mic as the greatest living comic. It, uh, if this is what is being counseled is like, I love it, said a 48 year old in response to the standing ovation the line and many more like it was greeted by raptors applause from the crowd which included a mass brad pitt tiffany haddish donna rawlings chuck law sterling k brown and others at another point he was more blunt said fuck twitter fuck nbc news fuck abc all these stupid ass networks i'm not talking to them i'm talking to you this is real life that's true i, I love that line as well says in a special like fuck twitter it's not real life right? it's such a poignant and simple line but i think for a lot of celebrities who do get themselves wrapped up around cancellations on there and mobs and shit it does represent a very small um you know proportion of people's kind of usage of the internet in general and maybe even social media and also it's not reflective of what's going on in the actual real world some of the controversies you get kind of obsessed with and kind of caught up in on twitter you try and repeat them in a pub somewhere and people are looking at you like what what the fuck are you talking about john people don't have no idea what you're saying it continues says that, but um, but that's precisely what the LGBTQ community, and in particular trans women, have rejected to Chappelle's used their real lives and bodies and gender identity as a punchline for the closer. He said, "Gender is a fact. Every human being in this room, every human being on the earth, had to pass through the legs of a woman to be on this earth. That is a fact." He says in the special, "Is his last um, of a string of Netflix specials that also included sticks and stones, equanimity, and a bird revelation." He also sided with Harry Potter, JFK author, yeah, Harry Potter author JFK Rowling. Um, by identifying as uh, Team's Turf, a term that means trans exclusionary radical feminist, an ideology that excludes trans women as women. The special currently number four on Netflix top US top 100 list. Why can't I read out loud? The special currently number four on Netflix top US uh, 10 list is a streamer's most popular title. Also features jabs at white gays and the Me Too movement and lesbians, among others. I don't hate gay people. He said, I respect the shit out of you. Not all of you. He says, I'm not that fond of the newer gays. Too sensitive, too brittle. I miss the old gays, the Stonewall gays. They didn't take shit from anybody. <laughs> it's funny because the, the things he's saying is what, they, is what Joey Diaz says, right? He like he misses when white people used to be white people, when they used to be tough and kind of centered and principled same with the gays i miss gays when they used to be actual gay people where they used to kind of you know fight people in the street had to kind of struggle for real things now they're complaining about you know not being able to go into bathrooms and shit i mean that kind of stuff and i fucking loved it again don't take stuff too seriously it's just jokes and even if it is too serious just turn it off do you know what i mean this this whole cancellation stuff is so bizarre i feel especially when it comes to stuff like netflix you don't have to watch this stuff like and again it's not like he's a rallying cry that he's kind of shouting from the rooftops to get people to pick up their bats and go to flipping doors on superstores and whack people around the heads that's not what he's doing he's just saying we should be all equal if we're all equal let's take the piss out of each other in order to kind of bring us all together if not we're going to be more separated than we're going to be together it's just going to lead to a more divided world as it already is at the moment in the last few days since close of release Chappelle has received a condemnation from the mbjc which called for the special to be pulled from the streamer. What the fuck is the MBJC? With the 2021 a track to be the deadliest year of the record change in the people in the United States, Netflix should know better. What, do they think he's going to be the flipping, he is the Hitler of the trans community? Like, are you for real? Perpetuating transphobia, perpetuates violence. Netflix should, um, 
immediately pull closer from his platform and directly apologize to the community. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I've never believed in this whole like words is violence thing. Maybe because I've actually been involved in fights and I've actually trained in martial arts and combat sports and I've actually played football and played sports in general and got involved in scraps in that way. Words can never be violence because vi when you, when violence happens, you know what violence is. Violence hurts. Violence leaves sometimes long lasting damage. Violence can, you know, um, lead to sometimes you losing your life, losing a limb. Do you know what I mean having you know life altering injuries? Like it's not it's not to be played with. Words can never be violence. Never never in a million years never especially words that are meant to be presented as jokes like you just need to just take a deep breath and relax like i don't know man because then what it does it cheapens when somebody actually says something really offensive to you it kind of takes away it's like if you brand everybody a racist because they don't share your view on you know diversity or multiculturalism wherever it may be when racism actually comes at your door how can you point that out and how can anyone take you seriously because you've branded everybody and everything a racist everyone's a neo-nazi everyone's a white supremacist like come on man they do exist of course white supremacy does exist in some way shape or form there are structures in place that are basically denying um, people the ability to move socioeconomically amongst different places look at who's the guy that built new york who effectively put in things in place that basically denied black and brown people from living in certain areas of that of new york in general right of that state so of course that does exist we know it does but if you call everything white supremacy how can you then address it how can you address it but yeah, um, loads of stuff to get into. But yeah, um, big applause for Dave Chappelle. Really recommend you check out that special. Legitimately one of my more favorite ones, I think, out of the four that he's done so far with um, Netflix, I think, in general. And I think it's such a refreshing thing to hear somebody saying the things that I'm kind of thinking in my head, but I don't maybe have the courage or the fortitude or the intelligence or the wherewithal or the, you know the vocabulary to say it the way he does and he kind of punches it really well the the certain words that he uses the gaps and the pauses the up widening of his eyes the little stars he does like he's just so good the only other thing i don't like about this thing he doesn't smoke a cigarette i wanted to see him smoke a cigarette because that's always a cool bit to see him smoke a cigarette because like you rarely see people smoking cigarettes the way he does he smokes cigarettes like he's smoking a joint like it's really pleasurable it's rare you see people do that now um so that's pretty cool to see but again we didn't see him smoking cigarette but we definitely saw him baby basically keep delivering maybe one of the best specials i've seen in a very long time so big up dave Chappelle. he is the goat obviously is the goat um i know it's difficult for other fans of comedy because they are used to seeing dave Chappelle being the funny jokey jokey guy but the guy that he is now is i think far more important to the culture than the jokey jokey version i think you can leave that to other comedians i think he's kind of transcended that and it's great to see him not kind of using not kind of getting to that platform and kind of becoming more like dull and blunt no yeah kind of yeah kind of being a bit more safe right neutering himself no if anything he's actually going in even harder in the paint um even though he's more famous you know what i mean so that's pretty sick to see man I'm, I'm not gonna lie it's pretty sick